<laughs> All right, we are recording. Welcome everybody to the SIG Network meeting for Thursday, July 23rd, 2020. First up is issue triage. So take it away, Bridget. Issue triage. Possibly this one is already answered. It just says, still says need triage. Does somebody want to grab this one? Should I give it to someone? Yeah, that's that's already triage. So okay. it just says triage un or? unresolved. So what should we do? Yeah, well, uh, I I will. We need to assign to the last person that replied and and remove the triage. All right. So I'm assigning it to CAD MOOCs. Typing is hard. I, I would say. Yes, but I don't know if Bowie or other person from Google is there too. What do we think? Tim? Minha? Oh, you can assign to me. Uh, the Mr. Han is the great. second last comment. Thank you. Perfect. Sounds great. Thanks. Okay. Moving on. Ooh, flaky tests. Ooh, 14 hours ago, somebody believes that they have an answer. What is the 92163? Uh, yeah, you were just over it. Uh, mm -hmm. Eliminate dependency of external IPs. Um, I mean, this one appears to be triaged. And it looks like there might be a fix. Right. Shall I assign it to someone? Sorry, I'm just reading it again. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's flaky tests, and someone thinks there's a fix. Um, why don't you stick me with it, and I'll route it. Was that Tim? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Okay. Packets from service. Sometimes arriving with IPF pod and not service. That sounds bad. Hard to reproduce bug. Does it say whether it's IPVS yeah. or IP tables? Oh, <laughs> that question was already asked in the issue. Yeah, let's take a look down. IP tables, okay. Looks like they're actively trying to troubleshoot. Who wants to work with this person? So Lars is already active. Do we, Lars, I don't know if you're here, but can we just tag you with the issue? That's you, Alborek. Yeah, I mean, he touched it today, so might as well own it. Until he decides that'll, not to. That'll teach him. <laughs> it'll teach him to not come to a meeting. You don't come to a meeting, you get things assigned to you. All right. I like how when people say why something is needed, they point out somebody has been wanting it for a long time, which that's probably true. Uh, Ingress subcommand. Did anybody answer? Somebody added some things uh, to check out. Is this an RFE? Yes. Um, the oh, question is, feature. is this something we want to consider, or is it something that we're not particularly interested in? Um, like. I understand why people want command lines for everything, but the sheer volume of flags that would be needed to make it useful seems like just write YAML. Yeah, also is there an argument to say that we should punt this until like Ingress V2 comes around? That's an like interesting point. Well, Ingress V1 is gonna be with us for a very long time. So right. uh, it seems, like if we wanted to do this, we would have to scope 
just how rich we want the API to be and how useful it is if it's not rich. Why don't you assign this one to me also, and I'll uh, I'll just say what I just said. Will do. I'm trying to type around kitty. No kitty. I don't know if it's worth commenting on the issue, but it feels like this issue is not really written for a feature request. It seems like a little informal for a feature request. Yeah. They formatted it right. Like, I mean, maybe they don't understand how to write feature requests. No kitty. The cat uh, is very I'm, upset that I'm talking to people he can't see, so that he's attempting to attack everything in sight. Uh, so we'll know that if you start typing garbage, what happened? Um, I did already start typing garbage, but happily it was on the other laptop. So, <laughs> all right, connectivity issue. No kitty. God. He knows I'll pay attention to him if he starts chewing on the blind pole which he is doing now. All right. Ooh. This sounds dire. So we delete a service and, or rather two services refer to the same endpoint. We delete one of the services and the other service, I guess the endpoint gets disabled or deleted at that point. It seems there is an APR in the bottom of mm -hmm. from this. Yeah. Mm, so this could be a fix. All right, who wants to take a look at this one and see if this actually fixes it? Since they're claiming it'll close the issue. Is there an end-to-end -end test for this? I don't, I don't I, mind looking I can't at say it. For I can't say for sure that there is. Um, can you assign this to Rob? Scott, Rob, I don't know if you're here, but uh, yeah, I was about to volunteer myself, but yeah, I'll, I'll take a take a look. I'm gonna say no. There's not. I'm like seventy five percent sure there's not an end to end test for it. Okay. It's a pretty safe guess. I assume we probably should make one. Yeah. There's oh yeah. God. There's another PR in progress uh, that may affect that may potentially help fix that, but I'm not sure yet. Okay. Fix right, the so... end-to-end -end issue or fix the... No, not the end-to-end -end issue, just uh, the, it, it deals with endpoint controller deletion handling. So Jay, are, are you taking this one or? Oh, I don't think uh, I signed myself, did I? I like how Matt says, oh. thanks for taking this over. <laughs> oh, oh, Matt had mentioned that he thought this might have been related to the uh, the other contract issue that's UDP related yeah, yeah. that um, Antonio, I think, is working on, but Antonio is yeah, yeah, related. I signed so. to me because I asked the, the guy and I can I can follow up with the, with the person. Yeah, you so, can take me off this one. This one is about TCP though, right? Yeah. So top, like, I didn't think we did anything with respect to CCP in contract. We, we, we don't. So the question is, why don't we do that? Because there must have been a reason. And the question or follow up is, should we? Okay, so Antonio, you want to look into that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I think that it's because TCP, well, I don't know. I, I, I will investigate that. I'm All right, comment that. policy. This one, is a, this one has a PR already. Yeah. PR. It does? I believe you, I just don't see oh, it. it ah, okay. So this could be a fix. Does somebody want to look into this? Interesting that it says it was assigned, but I guess since it's it's unresolved. Well, yeah, and I mean, we kind of depend on the person who assigned, or it's assigned to to look at it and then untag triage unresolved once they've decided it's, un, it's now resolved. Yeah, okay. Should we just ping him and find out if uh, yeah, I'm he here. thinks this is... Oh, you're here. I, okay. What do you think? I, I was triaging another issue and I stumbled upon this uh, thing, so I decided to fix it. Okay. So it looks like we the already have assignment. Is, the fix for this is actually really trivial and um, it just needs like, a, you know, a QTTL approval on that one. Okay, so what, if anything, should I do with this one? 
just say let's close it for now or let's close the tab well, for now and look next week to see if I mean, uh, it's unresolved yeah i mean we could I take we could remove the unresolved maybe. yeah yep okay how do i unrem how do i remove labels ah. gotcha all right moving oh copying and pasting is very hard Moving on. It's just a question about how to do something. Oh, interesting. This person wants to block a port in network policy and is being told that is not what network policy does. Correct. So should we to follow up on this, do we link them to the uh, docs that they can't would, seem to find? I would say or? just leave it. Just leave it with Winship. Okay. And it, sorry, is this a case of? It. Is this a case of? They want everything except one port open, That's or what are they like. just yeah. describing the problem? Wrong? Oh no, they they want to block one port. I think this is two part. One is a bug, which I think they've opened in Calico. The other is a feature request wherein they want to open, sorry, block only one port, but you know, there's no good way of doing that, uh, except that you have to allow all the ports that you want and not have a rule for the, the blocked port. So that's- we have, a, we have a use case for that in, the, uh, in that policy working group. Maybe we should reference them there if they want to join and talk about that. Because we yeah. have that problem. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is this assigned right now? Does that person okay. want to do that or? Is it assigned to Dan Winship? Uh, no, it's assigned to um, uh, Abhishek. Yeah, Abhishek. It's assigned to Abhishek right now. Abhishek, are you, do you, are, do you want to own it or? Yeah, I don't mind owning it because I think we are referencing this in the network policy API plus plus uh, group. So. Okay. okay. So the, your job is to figure out if this is a bug or a feature or close. And then remove the triage label. The enhancement request. If it if it's an enhancement request, then we should make sure that there's enough information there to understand what it's about, and then we can figure out if we actually want to entertain it or not. Okay. Great. Okay. Let's see. Application gateway ingress controller. Let's see. We have. Yeah, I think Akash Some might be here today. Akash, are you there? He looked at this and mentioned it looked like an, oh yeah, he's there. Yeah. Um, Maybe not a networking issue, possibly? Uh, yeah, Akash, what was the story on this one? It looks like an Azure issue, specifically Ingress, right? Yeah, so uh, what, uh, what they have said here is, uh, is that they have a service with the same, with the same on two different hosts with the same name and the same service port. So I don't know where, and I actually uh, so they said that uh, it should separate out on two separate sites. So I don't know that I went through the documentation of, of AKS. I couldn't find actually how it was a KTS issue. Maybe it's uh, maybe that should be. Uh, AKS issue. Yeah, I can follow up on that. You can assign it to me. Okay. Um, and what is your handle? Uh, it's A R A. Yeah, the first one. Great. Awesome. Moving on. IP tables rules never comes back after you start the firewall service. Sounds like a sad story for the ages. All right, there's been some discussion. Ooh. I like that last line. It's quite a sizable change. And it looks like, Jay, this is assigned to you, but not you haven't had a chance to triage it yet? Or? Um, that was a, yeah, this is, so this is a, yeah, I was wondering about this. This looks like a CNI. So this is a, so, let me see the beginning of this. Okay. 
Um, so yeah, I had a question on this because um, this is a you know that CNI plugin is lives in the um, CNI providers repo, right? Yep, and it it does not reconcile, and it's like CNI plugins is just a binary that gets run once on container add. Um, yeah. So yeah, this would seem to be a gap of some kind. I'm not sure exactly how we'd solve it. Maybe by making those firewall D rules permanent or something like that. Um, I mean, it's the same problem as, you know, somebody goes and manually flushes IP tables while a container is running. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, just with firewall D. It seems like it's important enough that like, cause everybody's using it. I mean, every, this is how you do host support, I guess. Right. So, so this is, this is where CNI shows its uh, inadequacy. Like doing these things in CNI was convenient, but doesn't follow sort of what we understand to be best practices of reasserting things. Um, and I'm not really sure that it's fixable without sort of a major, like a V2 level CNI sort of thing. I, I guess I wouldn't, I disagree, Tim. Um, okay. You know, there's no reason why the port map plugin couldn't do the normal spawn a daemon to handle port maps and then just do a periodic resync every 30 seconds to make sure those rules exist. I mean, it could. That seems like, that's sort of what I'm hand-waving at. Like, yeah. that feels Great. like a V2 sort of scope. I don't think that's unreasonable, though. Um, I mean, there are some considerations around when does that daemon exit, um, those kinds of things. But those aren't unique to port map at this point. Um, so, I mean, I, I think it could be addressed within the context of the current CNI framework and Kubernetes framework. I would so love to have that discussion. Um, yeah. But, uh, cause I, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I wonder how many different things we could lump together into this sort of CNI as a purely exec based thing is finding gaps. Whereas, uh, yeah, running I, long things might be better. Yeah, for sure that the uh, exec base setup is um, not as conducive to this. And that's kind of where the ideas around gRPC and some other kind of longer lived connection based thing um, came from. Um, and having a slightly richer API there. Um, that kind of paused from our side. I know Mike Cambrio is working on that, but he had to move off to some other things. Um, that's still kind of the plan long term. Um, but is there is there like a within the CNI scope is there like a working group or something that's talking about this? Uh, CNI maintainers have talked about it periodically. Um, it needs some resourcing. Um, maybe we can schedule something. Like I think it would be interesting to bring to have one of these Signet meetings where we just talk about. CNI and the known issues with CNI and the work that's sort of in flight because I feel like there's a pretty big disconnect between the majority of this group and the CNI group. Like, I don't have any idea what's really going on. Okay. What do you think? I mean, I, I can fill you in on that at any point. Um, like Cambria could I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm saying so. if I'm, if I have questions, everybody else yep. must have questions. Yeah, yeah, right? for sure. So let's, let's try to put aside one of these Signet meetings to just do like a CNI resync or something. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. And for this issue, and we're over time for triage at this point, yeah. but for this issue, uh, do we leave it with Jay for the moment and? Um, assign me to. Yeah, um, you can take me off of it. I just was looking at it initially. I mean, I'm happy to help Dan if there's anything, but okay. I think it's a little beyond my scope. Dan, Actually, what is your? DCBW. There we go. Did I not remember that? It was obvious. Nobody does. Which is fine. I do. Okay. Uh, should I? I feel like we're, we're probably over time. Yeah, we, we we are at time. Um, okay. If we All have right. extra time left over, we will come back to triage. So keep the window open, Bridget. But thanks. All right. Next, uh, Jay, you have iperf and burstiness. I'm assuming that's not supposed to be under triage. There was yeah, like so. I guess Tim had there's an issue with Docker with the <laughs> Docker shim, which I assume is people don't really use it much in production. And then on top of that, the issue was regarding fixing the burstiness, which Tim- Oh, this is the, the bandwidth limiting? Yeah, I assume it's just not gonna happen, but I didn't wanna 
with that statement uh, until you said I have it. yeah I have so little direct feedback on that piece of the system I don't know whether people are using it and it would break or whether it would be completely fine and nobody would notice well the, and I'm not sure how to get is that they're moving that out of the out of tree that's the plan right to move that stuff out of tree anyways right the docker shim yeah yeah i mean mostly from a core perspective we're, we're abandoning it in favor of the other stuff um yeah so so i thought maybe that pr we'd have to not accept it or whatever or tell them to do it in, in another repo but i don't know i guess that issue is there so what, what do you think we should do like we could research it more if you think it's worth looking into i you know i mean this is <laughs> This is one of the, the problems with um, the project of this scope. Like we could spend time researching it. I personally, I don't know anybody who's had a problem. Like I've never heard a customer complain about this. So I have no, I don't feel like I have anything to add to the conversation except that mm, it looks like it's an incompatible change, strictly speaking. Practically speaking, I have no signal. Yeah, I part of the problem is that we don't have an effective way to express the burst bits for Kubernetes. Like the annotation that we keep using for bandwidth limiting does not express that at all. And there are some intricacies with how TC actually uses that value that are specific to the TC implementation. So it's like, we, we can't say what that value should be and we have to pick this random default basically. So I, so we just I have, have no to kind of like basically say we can't do the thing that that person wants to do, I guess, because, because it would require measuring things that we don't against scenarios that nobody really knows about. Right. Like, well, I mean, it, it's possible to like solve it, but we'd need to sit there. We probably need to make our bandwidth shaping more flexible and descriptive. So like we could define another annotation that says, here's your burst. Um, but then we have to wonder about any other implementations. Correct. Yep. Right. Because those um, other implementations may not use the TC policing algorithm or whichever one it is. Yeah, exactly. And, and doing this through annotations was a hack from the beginning. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm torn on the one hand, there's probably nobody else who cares and it would probably practically be safe. On the other hand, if it's not, we're going to explode somebody and I don't, I'm anxious about that. When there's the overriding kind of ethic that the whole thing is going to be moving out of tree and that's where all the innovation in that space probably should be happening. Right? Like I, I think in general, right? Like once something's moving out of tree, the idea is slow down the stuff you're putting into it. Right. Um, unless it's important, like clearly. Well, this, in this particular one, like we, it was added with a official sounding name. And so at some point we made the decision that it's been around long enough that we were just going to keep supporting it, but nobody's made time to invest in it to do better than what we have. Um, moving it out of tree doesn't make it less officially official sounding, right? It like, it doesn't say Docker shim dot Kate's slash network bandwidth. It says Kate's Yeah, important to point out that the annotation is used by a lot of things, not just Docker shim. I thought that right, yeah. was specific to fix the shim part, but okay, yeah, I see. Yeah, but the problem is that, yes, you're right. Strictly speaking, it's part of the API surface at this point. I mean, um, the people who care about Docker shim could fix it in this way for just Docker shim and everybody else who has a runtime could fix it a different way by choosing that's, different values for burst. That's true. It is completely undefined uh, what the behavior should be other than what described very, very loosely. Um, Well, we should probably we time just box leave it open too. and see and see if they if they. I mean, we can just leave it open. I, 
I, I yeah, I'm really... fine to leave it open. I, it's on my, I, if I recall, I think I'm assigned this one. Um, and so I would circle back to it at some point. Um, but I still don't know what to do with it. Uh, Jay, rock do you, a hard you, do you think you understand enough of the conversation we've just had to update the issue with the pros and cons? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. Okay. Would I can do, to... yeah, I can update it some more. And, yeah. Okay. Thanks. That would be nice. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up, uh, service IP port deallocation with finalizer. Yes, I added that entry. So, um, yeah, it's more about a, a question. So lately we, we found an issue when, uh, when user delete a service with a finalizer, sometimes it, uh, somehow we leak the cost IP and no port. And then a week ago we look cost that, uh, it's because like when you did the service and while you're waiting for the finalizer to be removed, uh, we already deallocate IP and port when the deletion call is issued. But on the other hand, we have a repair controller that lists out all the existing services, which include the pending service, and it repaired it. So we added the cost IP and no port back. And then when the finalizer gets actually removed and the service went away, the, the, the allocation step doesn't happen again. So we leak those cost IP and port. And yeah, so that was the issue. And then originally I, I was sending out a fix that, okay, maybe we shouldn't let uh, the repair controller to repair the pending surface if it is going away. And then uh, Jordan actually raised another concerns that like, if we, to not repair it, um, like uh, if we allocate the cost IP and no port when you issue the deletion call, and possibly you can have another service get created and then get assigned the same uh, cost IP and port. And then I forgot the actual, I forgot the actual step, but eventually it would reach a point that you may have conflicting IP uh, on two different services. And then, yeah, and then that's why we have a question raised there that asking where we should deallocate IP and port when you issue the deletion call, or whether we should do that when the service actually uh, go away in the SCD. Uh, I have a question uh, on finalizers, if somebody understands them. Uh, having a finalizer, can, can, can a finalizer block I throw uh, an object for being deleted. Is this even possible? Yes. Yeah. That's that's the issue here. That the finalizer is not blocking. So, in the time that that you delete a service and has a finalizer, all the resources are are released. You know, and but yeah. the fi finalizer is not deleting the object. So in this gap you can create uh, things with the same source allocated. And that's the question. So there's, there's a life cycle in the abstract. There's a life cycle diagram of a resource. And when finalizer was added, it moved sort of the last state further out. And we're deleting things sort of prior to the last, or we're releasing the IP prior to the last state, right? Um, so Zeong, I saw, um, the PRs or so the, the discussions, but is there a hook to trap into the I'm actually deleting state in the rest uh, registry stage? Yes. So is, yes, is yeah, actually that, it's one. Is the fix that simple or am I missing something? Uh, theoretically, it is that simple, but, uh, but one thing to call out is like nobody is actually using that hook. Yeah, and we, we may hit some uh, unexpected issue, but yes, theoretically, just any that hook should be enough. And, and moving the deallocation logic to that new hook. Exactly. So, I mean, normally wouldn't like a reconciliation process just leave it alone until it's actually completely gone and then come back later and remove it? 
Yeah, I actually the, went back to the issue again, and and the issue is like if you just leave it alone, um, don't don't repair the IP endpoint, but could be some other some other people create another service that, that would get allocated the same IP endpoint, and then you can continue issue deletion core to the previous service, and that would trigger again the the allocation. Which happened to like broke the out of service. And if you if you just leave it, like if you don't deallocate it and you just leave it, and let the repair controller catch up with it later, then you have this weirdness of somebody who wanted to use that can't, even though it's not actually used by anybody. Cal and I actually were discussing that this week too. But I mean that's that's what happens in a lot of other cases too, right? I mean that's not a Service repair controller specific problem. Actually, it is uh, a controller specific problem. Yeah, I don't know anybody else who's doing something like that. Like, I could say get services and see none of the services are using IP address X. Try to use IP address X and get a message that says, sorry, this address is in use. I don't think there is any uh, other resource in the system, including volumes, that has this behavior. Okay. At least at the resources that. API server is accounting for whatever they use. So uh, I guess, Zihong, um, uh, did we try using this new hook? Does it seem to work? I actually, uh, I gave it a try a month ago and then I, I did hit some corner cases that it did not actually trigger the hook for some reason because we override the service registry in a weird way so that uh, I'm still trying to figure out like what's going on there, but it seems to work uh, in most of the cases. Most. So could somebody educate me a little bit though? Like the repair controller just keeps running continuously. It gets the list of services and the yes, fix in the PR says if the deletion timestamp does not equal nil, then skip repair but wouldn't you just get the list of services and then see, oh, hey, no service is using the IP address that's currently allocated. Delete so it doesn't really look at deleted. It looks at current. Get services for each service, get the IP, and then look at the snapshot that you just loaded. Is IP marked as allocated? If not, then allocate it. And then does the other way, inverse of the, and for ports as well. And the inverse of this, which is for every IP that's marked as allocated, is it actually allocated or not? If not, then it's leaked, marked as leaked. And then once the snapshot is modified, it just laps it on top of whatever the system uh, system uh, have. That includes overwriting what the, the, the allocation has done. So there are situations actually, which is, yeah, I, I see Tim's point, but I just want to bring your attention that we have that in the system. There is a situation where you allocate IPX and the snapshot will slap it on top of your uh, your uh, allocation, and X will will look like it's free, but it is allocated. And then the repair loop will pick it up again and do that again and again and again. It's not an easy problem to to work with, right? Just imagine a race condition where you're creating a service and allocated IPX in the middle of a repair loop process, and in the middle of the repair loop that the all the services already captured right of this new services is not there all right you allocate and then the repair loop will slap the the snapshot that just worked on on top of this so for a couple of seconds or so the system does not know that this ip is allocated but the repair loop will do it again because the repair loop looks at oh is this the service x the new service oh it's here it has this ip it says allocated then i should mark it as allocated the, the main problem is that we have the allocators for the node ports and the IPs and the servicing, you know, and you can have them out of sync. Uh, they, I don't think they will go out of sync. They, like you will never be in a situation where the allocator for IPs is different, seeing things different from the allocator for uh, services because the repair loop picks up everything all together, like all the services. <laughs> yeah, right, but that's yeah. why you but need they to can be the reverse from the reality. <laughs> that's something that you need to keep in mind, as I described. Yeah, I, is there, is there, 
do they eventually achieve consistency? Yes. Okay. I mean, that Cal basically describes Kubernetes in general. You reach eventual consistency. Yeah, eventual Don't. consistency is a thing, and data that does not represent the reality is another thing. Don't we use when when we're doing the repair loop though? Don't we check the resource version of the uh, bitmap so we don't overwrite a bitmap that's changed since we looked at it? I don't think. I, I think that is overwritten. I was checking this when trying to increase the bitmap for the subnet, and I, I think that just. Well, that seems wrong. Shouldn't we respect the resource version and go retry then? Yeah, but this this means you will never repair on a busy system. So uh, just imagine. Remember, uh, yeah, think, just remember this this bug with multiple API servers. You know that you know, sometimes conflate. They they always uh, overwrite the the previous one. Huh. I, I ask the API guys because uh, if we have uh, we are able to 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 not use in the bitmap allocators and use directly etcd and they told me that it's not possible right now so if you store the, the IP and you filter by the IP field you don't have to to deal with the locators or the node parts and they told me that's not possible right now they they need to do not, I don't know what um, also, given the time we have left in the agenda, um, I think we should probably take this either to the mailing list, the Google group, or back to the issue. Yeah. So it seems it, it seems strictly better to move it to the last hook, um, but it's an interesting problem at a deeper level. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, can we do a really quick follow up for the S3 style DNS with stateful sets? Whoever had that up, that item? I don't know if... It's marked oh, kernel time. I'm not sure who that is. Me. I don't remember. Hey, I'm trying to remember. Sure uh, hey, uh, so we had a quick discussion on the SIG network uh, mailing list, but there didn't seem to be a strong opinion uh, against it. So we were wondering if the uh, subdomain forwarding to a service might be a feasible way that we can progress where a stateful set can offer more than one DNS addresses as subdomains that it hosts. Uh, so that would basically mean that uh, a service can implement an S3 style DNS implementation for the internal network within Kubernetes. Sorry, I'm, re uh, I'm just rereading the, the thread real quickly to remember what we talked about. Uh, so in essence, uh, if the stateful set is backed by service name dot namespace, uh, start or service name can be something that gets forwarded to the stateful set, um, and that uh, uh, and to the same cluster IP, so that we don't have like a cluster IP scaling issue. Mm -hmm. Something like that could be a feasible way for a stateful set to offer multiple domain names that get uh, routed to it, uh, and where the domain names are uh, subdomains of its parent uh, service domain name. So this would be how an ingress controller would do it, for example, but it's just not possible to do it for the internal network. And uh, a lot of the times for performance reasons, uh, people don't want to go to ingress, but keep traffic local to the internal network. Yeah, uh, this thread just died and uh, we didn't really reach a conclusion. Um, yes. I apologize for that. Uh, I think I just lost track of it in my inbox. Uh, I'll move it back there because um, I felt like maybe we actually had maybe progress. Um, yeah, the suggestion you made seemed fine. Uh, it could work. But yeah. It, the service, you can't have multiple service addresses mapped to the same cluster IP. 
that that is also an interesting challenge. But, uh, and then there's a whole hierarchy of the DNS names as another aspect. Yeah, I need to think about um, the implication of what I suggested there. But the, the what I suggested was some way for service to opt into having um, at a DNS level the, the wild card of their service name, so star dot service yeah. namespace, et cetera, be yeah. be routed to their uh, service. Um, which the only thing that it really is in violation with is. Um, so I can't do two things. Let me move this back to my inbox. Uh, it's Mark on red. Um, where'd you guys go? I lost your window. There you are. Um, the the risk there is for headless services, which already use the host part of uh, the, there's one yep. one extra token, right? Um, yeah. And so that's sort of strictly speaking, that's in conflict. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. It's so in this meeting right now, I'm just looking for next steps. I understand that there needs to be a deep dive uh, to make sure that whatever proposal comes up is compliant or is is breaking in a good way. So I, I just because I didn't see much discussion over there, I just thought I'll bring it up today and see uh, how what's sure. happening. Sure. Uh, I, I appreciate you bringing it up. Um, I think the next step is to keep going with the mailing list. I don't know how I lost track of that thread because I thought it was actually really interesting. Um, so I, I will try to uh, respond to that um, as soon as I should can. We I have, a, should we just keep it to the Google group or should we open up an issue or a cap or something to in, on, on Google link? Um, it, a cap might be premature. If you want to move it to an issue, if you think that's got a better discoverability, that's fine. Uh, that's fine too. Um, but I wouldn't open a cap until we have a model that we think might work. Okay. So let's just do SIG network for now and uh, we can open up an issue uh, if need be. Okay. okay. Thanks for bringing it back up. Yeah, this is kind of, we, we, as you thought about uh, really integrating the S3 implementation with Kubernetes, this has been a very sore point for us uh, because uh, trying to offer an experience where they don't have to think about network hops and ingress controllers within the network and still be compliant, it's almost impossible uh, unless you take over DNS, which is often a big friction for product putting uh, S3 into production. Okay. Right. Like all of a sudden you have a you have an S3 stack that wants to be a DNS router, which it's Amazon is, but it's not true for most IT deployments. It, it lands up being a source of friction and uh, and has strong requirements on like not depend like on what kind of DNS solution a customer can use. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll follow up on the mailing list, that's all. I, I don't have anything new to add. Okay. okay. Uh, okay. Next up, we have Cube NFTLB. I think Laura and maybe some others are on to present that. And I see Laura is unmuted. We can't hear you, Laura, if you're talking. Still can't hear you, Laura. How about you let us know in chat um, or just speak up. Um, we'll circle back if there's time, if you can get your mic working. So uh, James, major themes in 119 release notes. Uh, hello, um, my name is James. I'm with the um, I'm on the Kubernetes 119 release team as a release note shadow. 
Um, we're about a month away from the scheduled release of Kubernetes 119 now, which is scheduled for August 25th. Uh, we're beginning to draft the final release notes. As part of that, we're visiting all the SIG groups to ask what their major changes are and what they want to highlight, if anything. So, kind of interested to hear your thoughts on that. So, about endpoint slices, it's useful. It doesn't have to, you don't have to give it to me now. I mean, I can take anything down now, but just, we, we do have time to, to draft stuff and to take ideas. I need to put people on yes. the spot, but. So I, uh, I have to admit that I'm terrible at keeping track of what happened in which releases. Um, so maybe we should crowdsource this, um, like a, as you're suggesting. Anybody who's done anything notable in this release, uh, please think about whether your release notes uh, are sufficient. You guys are you're sourcing from the uh, the release note blocks in the pull requests, right? Yeah, so all the release notes are also generated. This is really just if there's anything in particular that wants to be highlighted or you think is important or noteworthy. Okay, endpoint slice was, seems like a good one. Um, what else? Yeah, it's, yeah, there's some big changes to endpoint slice that uh, are not well covered right now, as well as uh, Ingress did go GA, so that's. Uh, there's not huge changes, but it is a GA release, so probably worth covering in some detail. Okay, sounds, sounds useful. Okay, uh, I mean, I'm fine with these two for now. I mean, I'll, I'll mention in Slack when we get a bit closer and I can come along to the next meeting in two weeks as well. And if anyone had any thoughts in the meantime, and just hit me up whenever if you need to. Thank you. I understand uh, how difficult it is to try and wrangle information out of people. So thanks for, for pursuing it. Yeah, thank you for coming up with something on the spot. Yeah, and don't feel bad about annoying people about it if they don't answer you. All right, uh, Bridget, looks like you wanna highlight Cal's dual stack PR. Yes, I want to tell everyone about all the adventure and excitement that could be theirs if they review that PR, because think of the glory of that enormous diff. Look at the numbers there and think you could make that even more terrifying. Kel, you want to tell us a little bit more about what people specifically could look at? Just please review. There is, I think I've tried as much as I can to split everything in separate commits spread out, all right? Each commit touches on a very specific topic and a very specific plan. So please go ahead and, and go, just do it, all right? Uh, Dan is the only one who just did the first pass and nobody else. So please, 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 please just go. And our timeline on this is it would be really nice if we can get this in early in 120, because if we're going to move the foundations under everyone, Getting that in earlier rather than later will just make everyone's end of 120 much better. Kel, I have it open. I just haven't had a block big enough to actually uh, get through more than a little tiny bit at a time. I, uh, I am the person who built this, and I don't think you will ever, right? So just a block for one commit at a time. That's, what, that's literally what I do, all right? I block for one thing. I don't know. Yeah. Sorry. So t tomorrow is my almost no meetings day. That's when I was hoping to get to actually send right. you some feedback. To me. All right. I, I think we're comfortable timeline wise. Dan Williams wanted to, to, to do on 19, but. No, I mean, that's, that's clearly not going to happen. I don't want to push something that's not ready if we're not comfortable uh, with it. I was just curious if it might happen. I, I want to make the decision not, not because of anything other than we want to be very comfortable with this. All right. As you can tell already, it's, it's touching on the allocation. Right, touching on the, the release of the IPs and ports, which is a topic we just discussed now. That's how we have, Tim and I have a background story on some finicky behavior over there, all right? Uh, I think Antonio ran the tests and it looks like we're flying a good, like green, except on two, three tests, which I'm trying to figure out why. Again, around conversion to external name because my life is gonna revolve around headless and external name for the rest of my life. Other than that, there is, there is something for everyone. There is something in Kubelet, there is something in uh, QProxy, there is something in Controller Manager, there is something in API Server. So whatever your interest area, I promise you there is something in this thing for you. 
Thank you. Thank you, Cal. See, Cal, you should do movie excitement. trailers. Mm -hmm. should be you should write movie trailers. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks. Yes, please look at that PR. I have that on my list as well. Um, so next up, Antonio Test Grid. Yeah, I I started to add uh, kind of to SIG network because I realized that we are not covering some tests that are only running in SIG network and just for adding coverage to do a stack. You know, I, hopefully we can have some jobs running to not merge in only with our reviews and having some end-to-end -end or integration tests running in on Cal's PR and the next PRs regarding dual stack. It's just a, a heads up. This is still not working. No. All right, great to see. Uh, we got a couple of minutes left. Um, Laura, if your mic is working now, do you want to say a couple quick words? I think at this point we should probably punt the presentation to next week, but if you just want to take a couple of minutes to talk about what Cube NFTLB is, that would probably be okay. Could also just put a couple triages back up. Yep. Um, well, before we do that, um, does anybody have anything else that they want to talk about or bring up in the last couple minutes? I'll just uh, do a shameless shout out to Service APIs uh, sub project. We're hoping to get an alpha release out for uh, sometime in August. Uh, so we're getting the final bits together for that. If you're interested in this next generation of service APIs, now is a great time to get involved before we commit to even our first alpha release. Uh, so we meet every week on Thursdays. Uh, you can come uh, meet with us next week if you're interested. Uh, all the information should be in Slack or on GitHub. All right, thanks Rob. All right, we got two minutes. Can we do one issue? Let's do it. We can just get and describe pods, but so not do logs in a week, didn't we? Or last time, didn't we? It's possible. It is 15 days old. Let's yeah. see what's happening with it. I think this was an issue with Kubelet not yeah. providing. Go ahead, Jay, sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. I was going to say, I thought it was an issue with Kubelet not being able to provide um, its service or not the Kubelet service on that node not being accessible. Yeah, I think the cluster was just not set up properly here. Um, but he, I don't think he ever responded. Um, I mean, I think we could probably close it next week if we don't hear anything back. Um, I, I think I briefly looked at it and it looked like there might have been a collision in the way the IPs were, were set up. but in a CNI, but either way, I don't think it's a bug in any way for a SIG network bug. All right, so we look next week. One more. Yeah, Dan this one we also be... saw last week as well, I yep. believe. Uh, this like... is for Tim. Do you want this, Tim? Remind me this issue. <laughs> Sorry, can you hit uh, the top again? Uh, I, uh, the, the, the guy, was explaining that the RFC for the subdomains, the there are you can relax the validex validate. I I I asked the coordinates people and they they say that he right, but I don't know the implicate the implication of changing this. So I told I told the guy before going with the PR that he has to have a seek approval for the for these changes. So I always are doing this, this kind of things. So the question, I, I mean, it feels like a very broad question, right? Like we, we spec a lot of things as 1123 
Um, if in fact we want to go with the broader uh, definition of DNS names, then uh, I feel like there's a, well, I mean, we could do it just for DNS searches, right? But that feels like half of a measure, right? Like why, why would we not also try to tackle say service names? Well, that, that brings us to the top of the hour. So that gives us something to think about as we go out. Okay. Is this one assigned to me, Bridget? It is not. It is Can you assigned. assign it to me? That way I'll actually see it. Yeah. We'll, we'll do. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. And I moved the NFTLB item to next week. So hopefully Laura can return next week and we can have that presentation then. Uh, Excellent. Then, look at your Thanks. issues, review PRs. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thanks, Dan. Bye. Bye. Thank you all.